When I took the job, I braced myself for criticism, expecting many people, without even watching the show, to instantly label it girly, stupid, cheap, for babies, or an evil corporate commercial. I encourage skeptics like this to watch My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, with an open mind. If I'm doing my job right, I think you'll be surprised. Lauren Faust, executive producer of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, season one. A number of years ago, I shared a table with strangers at a comedy venue. During intermission, we chatted. For some reason, gender politics was on my mind and I burst out with, why are we teaching our girls to be more aggressive? Why are we falling in line with the belief that you achieve equality by taking on the characteristics of a white alpha male? Why don't we teach boys to be kind? I thought I was really in for it with that rant. I thought for sure the men were going to get defensive and I was going to regret opening my big mouth. Instead, the men at my table looked sad, nodded their heads and said, that would be nice. Even as a child, I wanted to live in a world with a flourishing natural environment and friendly people everywhere. Surely we all dreamt of that. Politics, science, economics can only go so far towards building such a world. People together need hearts and minds that embrace that goal. They need values that help them prioritize between individual, community, and planetary goals and create balance. Religious leaders such as Mohandas Gandhi, Desmond Tutu, Martin Luther King Jr., Thich Nhat Hanh have done much to teach the power of kindness. Both Desmond Tutu and Tenzin Gyatso, the Dalai Lama, have spoken openly about not being so concerned that people take up their particular religious beliefs. They feel the need for people to just learn compassion here and now to ensure the future of our planet. Artists such as author Charles Dickens, musician Pete Seeger, filmmaker Michael Moore, poet Maya Angelou have with words, music, and images moved people to recognize the humanity of their neighbors and to cherish the beauty and mystery of nature. So who or what is inspiring our young people today to cherish gentler qualities, qualities that bring people together as a community and a force for love, love of humanity and love for the great planet Earth. Many people would feel most comfortable if I pointed to some elderly and worthy institution. But inspiration has always been a chaotic force. It springs up where you least expect it, and the finest artists are flexible enough to allow it to come where it will. So I put it to you that the most astounding movement for kindness to raise its head in recent years is My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Yes, we are talking about the bronies. My Little Pony began its life as a toy marketed to little girls. This toy had an attached animated series to help sales. If you go back and watch some of those original shows, you'll find they're simple entertainments without a lot of complexity or depth. When Hasbro decided to renew this toy line with another animated series for the fourth time, they brought animator Lauren Faust as the creative director and executive producer for the show. Previously, Lauren Faust had worked on the television series Powerpuff Girls and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, the latter for which she won an Emmy Award in 2008. Like myself as a child, she was unquestionably a girl, and she never let that limit her. She watched animated features like Lady and the Tramp and read superhero comics like X-Men 
or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Personally, I was a Spider-Man fan. <laughs> so, when she took the helm of My Little Pony, she wanted to make sure that the portrayal of girls showed more depth and breadth than you normally find in a children's production. She then wanted to put these female characters into stories that were more challenging and emotionally truthful than you normally find as well. What she didn't count on was that these same stories were going to have resonance with grown men. Bronies is a portmanteau word combining the words brothers and ponies. Though these days it equally applies to the girls. <laughs> Faust's My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, was launched October 2010. By June 2011, less than a year later, the first Brony Con was held in New York. Certain episodes have attracted more than a million viewers in the US, and it is now seen in more than 140 territories around the world. When psychiatrist Dr. Patrick Edwards a neuropsychologist, Dr. Marsha Redden, asked for My Little Pony fans to answer surveys about themselves. They received more than 24,000 responses. These are some of their findings. 87% of their respondents were male. 53% of the subjects were under the age of 20, with the next largest group, 41%, being between 20 and 30 years old. The average age of the population was 21.33 years, with the oldest brony being 57 years old. Maybe we can bump that a little further. <laughs> <laughs> Some people think of bronyhood as being a gay thing, but 70% of the bronies describe themselves as being heterosexual. 12% identify themselves as bisexual, and 2% describe themselves as homosexual. 9% labeled themselves as asexual or not interested in sex, and 3% were unsure of their orientation. Bronies are highly educated and or students, with 63% of the bronies in or having completed a college degree. The brony phenomenon has a worldwide reach. Bronies from all over the world responded to the survey. 69% were from North America, however, 21% were from Europe, 7% were from Australia, go team, and 2% from South America. Asia may be better represented soon with the recent launch of the show in Japan. The researchers also asked questions to do with the moral and value aspects of brony engagement. Most bronies felt that the MLP moral message represents a realistic approach you can use to face life's problems. Of the values they felt emphasized by the MLP, MLP characters and storylines, the most important of these values was kindness, showing compassion towards others, whether they are friends or strangers. Dr. Redden, as quoted in the Daily Doc comments, I think bronies are a reaction to the US, having been engrossed in terrorism for the past 10 years, living on the edge the same way my generation lived through the Cold War. They're tired of being afraid, tired of angst and animosity. They want to go somewhere a lot more pleasant. So, what does My Little Pony Friendship is Magic teach? Core to the show are a set of jeweled necklaces and a crown that the lead characters wear to wield special powers. These powers protect them in times of trouble. The ornaments represent qualities that are known as the elements of harmony. The character of Applejack, let's see, there she is. Where's the regalia representing honesty? She is portrayed as a straight-talking farm worker who believes in the values of hard work and integrity. She often demonstrates that speaking the truth brings with it understanding and the possibility for growth among friends. 
You want to pass that around. You can take a close look. The character of Fluttershy. I think I'm looking a little Fluttershy myself today. <laughs> Where is the regalia of kindness? She cares for the many animals who live around their town of Ponyville. Fluttershy undoubtedly represents our Unitarian Universalist value of respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Character of Rarity. Let's grab her up here. Where's the regalia? Representing generosity. She demonstrates that wealth is of little value if it is not shared. Good fortune should lead every pony to be more actively compassionate. The character of Rainbow Dash, she's a big favorite with the bronies. <laughs> Whereas the regalia representing loyalty. Hers is the loyalty of acceptance and active engagement with her friends. She shows the resilience to work through troubles and disagreements, rather than giving up when things get tough. She sticks with people who represent love, rather than being swayed by those who represent status. Oh, you love this one. I don't like her too. The character of Pinkie Pie <laughs> wears the regalia representing laughter. Pinkie Pie's laughter brings perspective so that people do not become entangled in unreasonable fears and despair. Her laughter also bonds people through good times. Finally, the character of Twilight Sparkle wears the crown representing magic. But you must remember that in My Little Pony universe, friendship is magic. Twilight Sparkle brought these six characters together in friendship, and as such they create a special power through the harmony of their relationships. Greeks and Romans had their own concept that the whole is greater than the parts. This is illustrated by the Aesop fable concerning a father demonstrating to his sons that a bundle of sticks together is stronger than each stick separately. A bundle, just try and try your best and it won't break. But one stick at a time. And this is why you need the elements of harmony. Nearly all of the villains in this world are rehabilitated through kindness and offers of friendship. A magical dragon by the name of Discord is one of the pony's most powerful foes. In an early episode, let's change the page here. Uh, in an early confrontation with this character, the ponies defeat him using the elements of harmony. Later, he is placed under the care of Fluttershy. She does everything she can to, to show concern, generosity, patience, and most importantly, friendship, while he seeks to make her life difficult. In the end, when it looks like after all her efforts, she is going to give up, Discord relents. He has no other friends he comes to honor the fact that her efforts on his behalf were genuine. So what sort of impact has this show had on the Brony community? How did they express their involvement? They have almost nailed the five elements of religion. I've spoken about this previously. Meditation, creativity, values, community, and service. Many fandoms creatively engage with their core story. Bronies seem to be particularly active. They paint, sculpture figures, compose music, write stories, sew costumes, program games, 
animate their own episodes and more. I don't, is there anything else? <laughs> My favorite artistic effort would have to be a set of animated wooden toys someone lovingly designed, carved, and painted. You turn the crank, and in the case of the Applejack toy, she kicks an apple off of the tree, and the apple falls to her dog. It's just exquisite. And all the other ones are pretty amazing, too. As far as service goes, I have never participated in a fan group that is so dedicated to charity work. Two particularly large Brony charities are Bronies for Good and the Brony Thank You Fund. The Thank You Fund Statement of Purpose reads, the Brony Thank You Fund exists to promote and collect donations to worthy charitable organizations, especially those centered around children. Your gift will be bundled together with those of many other bronies and passed on to charities in the name of the herd. Help us demonstrate the element of generosity to everyone by giving generously. They have already made payment to the Toys for Tots Charity Fund, a respected national charity in the U.S. Bronies for Good, this is their website, not only collects monies for charities, such as the Engineers Without Borders Rainwater Harvesting Tanks for Tanzania, but they also encourage more direct engagement for which you are awarded Bronies for Good badges. Currently, they are running a blood donation drive, encouraging people to give three hours of volunteer time to a soup kitchen or animal shelter, or participate in social justice activities. Now, they just need to produce some My Little Pony Friendship is Magic guided meditation CDs, and hey, <laughs> they're one of us. After hearing all this, I would like to put it to you. How many of you would like to be bronies? Because I am sure as anything, this, this sort of joyous engagement with what is life-affirming is where I want to be. There is a thing bronies do where they touch each other's knuckles in affirmation called a bro oof. All right, you go like this, all right, with each other though. So let me encourage you right now to bro hoof one another. Today we can be Unitarian Universalists and bronies. <laughs> bro hoof, hey, bro hoof. <laughs> Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs>